Now one look at me and you'll realise that I am partial to the odd rabbit pie or two, but the truth is I can't eat every single rabbit that I shoot and most of them come down here to the Feathers and Fur Falconry Centre at Moss End Garden Centre near Bracknell in Berkshire, uh, where the staff here do an amazing job helping to raise awareness and educate people on birds of prey species from around the world. So the centre holds uh, regular flying days here, exhibitions, demonstrations, educational days, that sort of thing, uh, where they fly lovely ladies like Rossi here, who is a female Harris hawk, um, in a field out the back. Now normally in the wild, Rossi would be hunting uh, rabbits and small mammals in South America and southern parts of the USA. But, and you'd have thought as a result of that, the hunting field or the flying field at the back would be devoid of rabbits. But in actual fact, the staff here keep the birds well fed to, uh, to discourage them from flying off um, and hunting for themselves. So uh, hopefully we can thin out the rabbits to provide even less temptation for Rossi. Who's a lovely girl, eh? So bizarrely, the rabbits are still a bit of a problem. Their scrapes and the holes in the field that they've dug have made the ground really uneven, which is a real problem here because many of the people who come to see the birds in action are elderly and have disabilities, and getting a wheelchair across the ground is really difficult. So this is probably one of my smallest permissions. It's only around about, I should say, probably 50 metres square, and there's some long grass at the back there that takes a lot of the permission out of action because you just can't see the rabbits in there. But in terms of rabbits per acre, it's probably one of my most prolific. Now, because of the size of the place, I tend to come every few weeks for short visits uh, and try and pick off two or three each time rather than kind of sit out for hours and hours and hours. So we be before we get going, just to let you know what gear I'm using, the rifle is a Day State Huntsman Revere, uh, the Safari edition with its textured stock. Uh, 177 12 foot pound gun. You know, I love this gun. Really, really accurate. Uh, I use JSB exact pellets in it, but it's not pellet fussy at all. And I know I can take shots out to 40 meters uh, from time on the range. Um, side lever action, humor air regulated, 13 shot magazine. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just a great rifle. On top, I've got an MTC King Cobra. 6 to, 20, 6 to 24 by 50 scope. It's the second focal plane version. And holding all of that together, most important job of all is a set of sports match mounts, which I use because they've got a lifetime guarantee. And then I've got all of that mounted on top of a, uh, uh, on top of a Rotex uh, tripod, which just enables me to sort of pan left and right and get a really stable platform to shoot from. Well, I'm not after pigeons, to be perfectly honest, um, but the, uh, the farm next door is a farm that I'm trying to get permission to shoot on. And uh, he has a I know he has a real problem with, with pigeons because they, earlier this year they were eating his barley crop and um, right now they're eating his cattle feed. So with a bit of luck, if I see him later on tonight, I can tell him there's one less to worry about and that might put me in good stead to get a new permission. one over there on the right hand side but he's right in the long grass hopefully he might move out oh hang on there's one just come out on the left Well, that one came out on the left there and only looked about three quarters grown. Um, hit it really hard, did the full classic rabbit somersault and I can see that he's dead on the ground. What I'm going to do is that any rabbits that I shoot, I'm just going to leave them there rather than stomp about. Then I'll pick them all up at the end.
Well, that one was right over on the uh, same position as the last one, actually, right on the 34 meter um, boundary. Um, I could just see him over the top of one of the blue, blue plant boxes. But I gave him a squeak and he stood up really nice and tall, gave me a very easy target. And I think it was a little bit bigger than the last one, actually. Fully grown, that one. Well, you try and avoid that sort of thing, but every now and then you don't catch one quite right, which is what happened there. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I've already shot two rabbits at almost exactly the same distance. There's a little bit of a breeze pushing across. That might have been a factor. Um, but although I hit him hard, he wasn't down clean. Um, the thing to do in a situation like that is not to panic. And thanks to obviously a side lever action rifle, you get a quick follow-up shot. And the key is to really make that second shot count, which is what I did there. And um, yeah, I put him down after a few seconds so he didn't suffer too long. I just caught, when I sat in the pavilion, I just caught a flash of movement at, my, at the side of my eye. And there's three or four rabbits kind of behind and the other side of the pavilion. God only knows how long they've been there. So I'm just going to try and poke myself around the edge of the pavilion and see if I can get lucky. Well, there were three rabbits behind the pavilion here and I picked off the uh, the first one, the biggest rabbit, which was the furthest one away, hit him with a nice clean headshot in the back of the head, he went down. The other two were youngsters, one of them cleared off, the other one hopped around a little bit um, and was a bit close, about 15 metres. So I gave him a little bit of hold under and he went down, he was dead from the minute the pellet hit. But youngsters tend to flick around quite a bit, but he's, he's dead as a doornail down there. Um, I had to wait quite a while for that uh, for those two so I think I'm going to call it a night that's five rabbits which is not bad for down here all I've got to go and do now is pick them up so thanks very much for watching Rich Saunders doing his usual great work on the rabbits there. Next up, I'm taking a close look at an air gun that's been part of my regular lineup for several years now.
Well, I think this counts as a long-term test because I've been using this air gun pretty regularly now for about four years. So it's the Wolther Rotex RM8UC or Ultra Compact. It's distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale and you can pick one up new for under £550. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that buys you an air gun that way outperforms its asking price in terms of accuracy and reliability. Several of you have asked me for more information on this air gun since I featured it in a recent hunting video. So I'm gonna take a look at it in a bit more detail now. So the first thing to really strike me about this air gun when I first picked it up is just how solidly constructed it is. Now, build quality is excellent throughout and its synthetic stock is really tough. So the stock is ambidextrous and it's been really thoughtfully designed. Now the, the fore end is relatively long so there's plenty of room to accommodate your leading hand and it's also equipped with an integral rail for accessory attachment. Now as you can see it's a thumb hole stock and the cutaway is plenty generous to accommodate larger hands. Uh, the pistol grip has got a real palm filling swell to it and its steep rake gets you right onto the trigger. Another thing I really like about the stock are the patches of raised stippling. Now, they look great, but more significantly, the little stipples are really crisp and they're arranged in all different directions, which means they really grip into your hand however you're holding the gun. Now, there are panels of that stippling on both sides of the pistol grip and also on both sides and the underside of the forend. Like I said, they really do their job. They literally stick to your hand, even in the wet. The UC's overall length is about 91 centimetres, so it handles very well in confined conditions, and it weighs a pretty solid 3.8 kilos. Now that may, fit, may sound quite hefty compared with some lightweight air guns, but this one has been designed in a way that it balances well and it, it just feels very comfortable to shoot. Now, the cheek piece is nice and high and that's been designed to give good eye alignment when using a telescopic sight. And although the RM8 is a recoilless PCP, it has a ventilated butt pad, which feels really good in the shoulder. The UC's 34 centimeter Lowther Wolther barrel comes fitted with a silencer, which adds to the brilliant value of this air gun. Now it is a relatively short silencer to match the gun's compact lines, but it does a pretty good job of keeping it quiet. And you can always unscrew it to reveal a half inch UNF thread if you want to attach something more substantial. I've already mentioned the RM8's build quality. Now, it's really well engineered and the finish of the metalwork is very tidy throughout. Now, this one gets little more than a wipe down with an oily cloth after each time I'm, I've been out with it and it almost looks as good as new still. Now, scope mounting is via a pretty long dovetail rail um, and that's set up in a way that enables you to get the scope down really low to the barrel. Now, that's a feature that I really like along with the fact that that rail also isn't interrupted by the magazine. That magazine is a pellet friendly eight shot unit. Now to remove it, you pull the bolt all the way back and then pull back the retaining switch just beneath it and the magazine then pulls out from the left. Now you then load pellets nose end first from the side of the magazine. So you want the side with the silver cog facing towards you. Um, once you've loaded it and the magazine is full, you then push it back in from the left, push the bolt forwards, which takes the retaining switch with it, and the gun is then loaded and cocked, ready to shoot. The auto safety catch will have come on. And as I said, the magazine sits within the action, so it's not in the way of your scope mounting. The RM8 runs a side bolt action, which has a really nice chunky handle that makes for easy operation, even when wearing gloves. Now, the rear stroke cocks the gun and engages that auto safety catch. The forward stroke indexes the magazine and probes a pellet into the breech. Now it's a really positive mechanism and it's kept the shots coming without a hitch in all of the years that I've been using it. Trigger performance can make or break an air gun at virtually any price point. Now thankfully, this one has a pretty good two-stage unit 
and its gently curved blade has a nice wide face. Now, I understand that the trigger is adjustable, but I think that's only in its first stage, but I've got to say, I've not done anything to this one because it feels absolutely fine to me. First stage weight and length feel perfectly good, and then it comes to a really positive stop before a crisp and predictable second stage brake. The automatic safety catch is positioned at the rear of the action and you can re-engage it without having to re-cock the gun. Now it's safe when it's in the rearward position and then you have to depress the little button in the middle of it with your thumb when you thumb it forwards to get the gun ready to shoot. Now that sounds like it could be a bit of a faff but in all honesty it quickly becomes second nature. Power wise this gun's running at about 11.5 foot pounds and Thanks to its regulated action, it's also pretty consistent and it's staying within six or seven feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now, from a full 230 bar fill, this 177 is returning about 160 shots and you can expect a few more in 2.2. Now, when it is time to refill, it's simply a matter of plugging in the supplied quick fill probe into the inlet on the underside of the stock and that's right next to a clearly marked gauge, which gives you a really obvious visual indication of your remaining air pressure. As for accuracy, this air gun's consistency, Wolder barrel and decent trigger make accurate shooting pretty straightforward. Now, I wouldn't entertain the idea of using an inaccurate air gun for live quarry shooting, and this one has more than passed the test on that front. I have shot countless rats and grey squirrels with it. On paper, it's capable of ragged single hole groups at 40 meters, and in calm conditions, you'll be walloping 30 millimeter spinners at 50 meters, shooting from a rested position. So, that's the Wolder RM8 UC. Now, after years of use with this air gun, I just struggle to find any fault with it, especially at its price point, bearing in mind that with this Richter Optic zoom scope, the whole combo only costs around £600. Now, it's a relatively compact air gun, it's consistently accurate, and on top of that, it is built with the build quality to deliver years of dependable use. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back with more in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to take a look at the subscription offers that we have for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, if you haven't had enough of my voice, I was on the Shooting Times podcast last week, so do tune into that if you want to hear me chatting with Shooting Times editor Patrick Galbraith. As I said, I'm back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.